gotta love it. Howdy folks, it's Nito with AP 2020 Outdoors. You know, I've been shooting my Glock 42 for uh, roughly probably, probably about five weeks. And I've noticed, you know, I, I had never shot a Glock previous. Well, actually I had the Glock 26 about three weeks prior to that. However, I had not shot a Glock, uh, had no experience shooting these specific pistols. And I noticed with my Glock 42, I was shooting low. Um, and I just thought, oh, well, maybe I just need to learn the new grip angle. And then one day I finally sat down and actually bench rested the uh, pistol off sandbags and I truly was shooting low. And I uh, installed a set of the Trigicon. These are the HD sights uh, several weeks ago. And I was still shooting, I was actually shooting lower with these sights as well. So I started doing my homework and I got a hold of Ameriglow and they sell aftermarket uh, custom firearm sights, uh, a front sight. And this is the uh, all models. 0.165 inch height, standard uh, factory height. And the Trigicons, I looked up the specs on these, and these are 0.185 inches high. So 20 thou, you would think, you know, maybe not make a big a difference. Well, tell you what, let's go outside and uh, find out if it does make a difference. Oh, by the way, Ameriglow uses the same tritium bulbs as uh, uh, Trigicon supplies. All right, stay tuned. All right, folks, I'm set up on a new location where I usually shoot at the farmer spreading manure all over that one field, which is fine. I'm a country boy. I grew up in Ohio, but hey, you know, one thing nice about hunting and shooting coyotes on different farms of deer hunting, farmers are pretty nice about letting me shoot at different places on their farms. So anyways, I've got the uh, Glock 42. We'll go ahead and see if these Ameriglow uh, front sight made a difference in my point of impact. I've got my shoot steel target set up at I uh, paced off eight yards. I definitely had the steel Angled at probably about 25 degrees that way All right, let's see what happens That's what I like to see. Let's go for the uh, round plates. Much better. All right, let's go back to the uh, round plates. One miss. Run that drill again. Step on the brass. All right, here we go. Of course, I would have to have an extra large shirt on. <laughs> Loving that. You know, if you folks know me, you know I'm a student, student of the gun, student of hunting. And I've been doing a lot of uh, watching videos on uh, YouTube, specifically Jerry Michalak. Jerry, I sincerely apologize. I totally screwed up your last name, and if you forgive me, I'll appreciate it. Jerry Michalak. And uh, a host of other folks. And the big thing they talk about is, uh, is uh, controlling your weapon. You know, the, uh, the big thing, the struggle that I had in the past, being more of a precision target shooter and hunter, is that I would just ride the recoil, okay? I would not fight the recoil, and that's just old school. You know, I, that, you know I've, I've been shooting pistols since, you know, probably the uh, late 70s, early 80s, but I never really learned how to shoot fast. So the big thing was to increase my left-hand grip pressure for a right-handed shooter, 
And then the other the other big thing I learned, I think it was J.J. Ricaza. I, I don't know if I got his last name right. But he was talking about the reset on the trigger. Uh, I think I've got that concept to where after you shoot, you know, you have to load that trigger, I think somewhat before the slide and it goes back into battery. Because a lot, a lot, what a lot of folks do is they'll shoot, release their trigger finger, and by the time the, the slide is back in battery, they don't have any pressure on the trigger. So their subsequent follow-up shots are uh, slower. So let's work on that. I'm gonna work on the, uh, the uh, B27 or 28 target. I'm not sure what the classification is. I'll just go ahead and shoot from the uh, ready position here. <laughs> Gotta love it. All right, I got mags ready. Let's do that again. Oh yeah. That farmer's like, that neato, I tell you what. <laughs> All right, folks, well, I've got one magazine left. Thank goodness I reload. Just real quick, these are the uh, Badman bullets uh, I got from a gentleman in Lebanon, Oregon. I screwed up that one video. I think I said he was from Louisiana. So, Patrick, hopefully I, hopefully I got that straight now. <laughs> oh, by the way... That smoke is my thermocell. Ah, man, I hate bugs. I hate mosquitoes, especially. Especially. I don't know where I got especially. Uh, so anyways, oh, oh, one thing I was going to tell you about was that this is going to be the end of the video. If you're wondering where my Glock 26, my 9mm has been, well, I'm very excited. I sent it. Uh, there's a gentleman by the name of Tim with Norso. They do slide me, uh, slide milling in Las Vegas, and man, I am so freaking pumped to get that bad boy back. And uh, hopefully here in the next, I don't know, couple weeks, we'll be seeing it. All right, so, already got one in the pipe. Let's go ahead and finish off here. Let's see what I can do. Oh, yeah. All right, folks, it's Nito with AP2020 Outdoors. I hope you all enjoyed the video. It was much fun as I had making it. They call it, they're calling for thunderstorms again here in central Ohio shortly. Yep, I'll tell you what. With a little practice, you all could shoot better. Like I said, I'm learning as you're learning. I'm loving these Glock 42s. Stupid bugs, get out of here. <laughs> this uh, mirror glow front sight, pretty awesome. You know... That, that's a big thing too is that if you don't have confidence in your equipment you're not going to have confidence in your uh, in your shooting and that's one thing I've always strived for when I was shooting is just eliminate all the variables in your equipment and then the only thing left is up to you all right buddies we'll see you later